Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so why don't we get started? Uh, first of all, I wanted to just say thanks for everybody for joining. Um, Garen and I had a good conversation around um, personal branding, athlete branding, a platform which we've just launched, Huckle. Uh, so I wanted to just start out by saying that this is really to help you, the athlete. And this is a, a Q&A session more than me actually presenting. I do have a, a deck here that I'll present. I'll go through a little bit about what we do and how we do it and a little bit about me. Um, but this is really uh, an opportunity for you where you can ask questions around uh, what we refer to as athlete branding, which is how do you create financial opportunities above and beyond what you're doing with your sport to support your sport? Um, so that's sort of setting the stage, Garen. I, I don't know if you want to add anything into that. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Um, yeah. So, guys, what I'm, um, what I really want you to, to focus on during this session is, um, don't look at it as just like one dimensional. Like, look at it in in many different ways. Where um, if someone turned around to you and said, "Look, I've got an opportunity. I might be able to help sponsor you," a lot of people will say, "Okay, well, what, what's the what's the dollar figure?" right what you should be looking at is how can i utilize funds or, or resources to make me a better athlete yeah. so my history coming up through through australia playing rugby league is that it was quite easy for us to actually utilize those those resources because rugby league is the number one sport there in uh, there in australia over here rugby isn't a number one sport obviously everyone knows that you know Gridiron, you know, American football uh, is that, or basketball is, are, are those top line sports. So resources that are readily available for those those particular athletes. What you want to try and do is actually look at how you can actually get the most benefit possible to make you a better player. So don't just look at it as a an opportunity to oh, you know, I can get five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or whatever. Look at it as a way of saying, okay, so if there is a sponsor that's going to provide you with an opportunity to actually help support you with travel costs and things like that. Um, look at how do you want to reinvest that back into yourself. And that's where the personal branding is important. So I won't go on uh, any any further. I want to, you know, obviously Michael to go through uh, his part, but um, don't don't just sit there and not get involved uh, in the in um, in the session, please. Uh, when it comes to the Q and A session, just ask as many questions as you can. Um, you know, Michael's time is very vital, so we're, we're thankful for the opportunity for him to, to do this for us today. So uh, thanks, Kyle, for organizing this, and uh, let's get going. Yeah, thanks, Kyle, as well. I, I totally agree. I appreciate it. Thanks, Karen. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, Michael Kenny, I have a company called Three Big Wheels, and uh, we do what is referred to as athlete branding. Um, my background, I've been in marketing and advertising for over 25 years, sports marketing for that same period of time. I've worked at companies like Sony. Uh, I was the first person in, in charge of brand at GoPro, and uh, I've worked with hundreds of athletes. And so the tools that I'm going to share with you today, they're proven tools and they work. And those are the things that I think can help you and then also leads into what we're building with Huckle. So what is athlete branding? Um, we we have we've been working on this literally for over a decade, and it's really what we say is you have a core, you have a coach on the field, where your coach off the field, and how do you leverage opportunity? Well, you have your sport, which you love and you do, and we have found that if you align your interests and passions, what you're really really excited about that we can get brands that will pair with those interests and passions. And I'll talk about that on what we're doing with Huckle. But uh, what I mean by that is, it, and this is literally every time I sit down with an athlete, I say, what are you interested in? And they say, uh, health and wellness. And we say, yes. And they say, exercise. And we say, yes. And all of those things are inherent of you being the best that you can be as an athlete. What we're looking for, what are the things one degree beyond that? Uh, what are the things that are outside of your world of sport that you're still very interested and passionate about that that is the thing that we believe is this connectivity opportunity that we're doing on huckle that really provides opportunity for you the athletes um, so how do we do this and i want to make sure you can you see the change in slides 
Can you see the change in time? Yes. Yeah, okay, great, 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 okay. Um, so how do we do this? Um, and this is this is something that we do with our clients, but you can do this by yourself. And uh, I'll share this deck with you so you have it. But it's a little bit of a, a it's a little bit of a playbook for you. So first, what we do is we go through the exploratory phase, which is a no filter exploration of what are your true interest sets and passion points. Um, and you need to be real with yourself. What are those things that really drive you and uh get you know get your creativity juices flowing and what are the things that allow you to uh become excited about something those are the things that we believe are the connective tissue so then there's the definition phase so after you've done that and you've been really real with yourself and you said okay these are the things that i'm interested in now the definition okay you put on a whiteboard 10 different things are all those 10 things what you're interested in or is it just two or three um, and you're real with yourself on that phase too. And you actually define what those things are. And then what we call as a North Star. So now that you know those things, now you have this very marketable entity of yourself. And I can tell you from a marketing perspective, this is, this is where the reality is and the gold is, right? You being real. Um, so this North Star is something that you've gone through the whole process. You've been real with yourself. You've defined what those things are. And now you have a bit of a playbook. Um, and what we do at, at Three Big Wheels is we actually do do what we refer to as a brand book. Uh, you don't need to do this. Um, can you do it? Yes. Do you have to do it? I would say no. Um, but this is your North Star. And what it basically means is if you were to approach a company or a marketing person like myself, how do you set yourself up for success? And the way you do that is you present yourself in the best light, you present yourself on what your interests and passions truly are, and you present that authentic part of yourself that in addition to you being an athlete is something where you can make money. Um, so again, I wanna iterate the fact that we've been doing this for, you know, the hypothesis has been around for about 10 years and it works. And now what's happening from a marketing perspective is that we started um, trying this from the brand side, which is what's meaningful for brands. So what's meaningful for companies is, you know, certainly, and I know that you're probably going to have a lot of questions around this. Do you need to be an influencer with a lot of followers? Um, does that help? Yes. Is that a necessary? The answer to that is no. Um, what, what marketers are looking for right now is the essence of real, the authentic part, the authentic story, the authentic content. And again, if you can do that from a point of you've done your due diligence and you've been real with yourself and had that dialogue, you're actually defining what that authentic part is. That's your interests and passions. Um, so I mentioned we've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, I did work at GoPro, um, you know, working with athletes and, and, companies is in my DNA. We've reviewed over 5,000 partnership agreements and proposals. So I know what brands are looking for. And we can translate that through athletes and what your authentic part is. And we make that connective tissue, which is why we started Huckle. So Huckle is a platform that just launched over the course of the last three months. Um, and this is the thing that I created for athletes. It's for you. Um, the, the fact of the matter is do brands benefit from the, the answer to that is yes. Um, but it was really created for you, the athlete. And so what we're doing on the platform, so it's huckleup.com. And what we're doing on the platform is we're connecting athletes and brands, um, through interests and passions. And as I mentioned, I, you'll, you'll hear me talk about that a lot on the call today with your questions. Um, but it's really about your interests and passions. What are you, what's important to you? And if we can know that, then if I can have a brand find you um, and say, you play rugby and you like whatever your interests are, travel, dining, cooking, whatever those things are. If I can have a brand that says, I've got an athlete um, that, that actually has an interest in what they do, now suddenly you're an authentic marketer for them. Pay to play works, meaning I can pay anybody to say anything, but the reality is, my kids know what's real in that storyline. Um, so we're creating a platform which is meaningful. Um, it's a connective tissue so that companies can actually connect with people that really are talking from an authentic place and they can collaborate and mutually profit. 
So um, this is the platform that we're creating. You can join it. It's free to join. Uh, in fact, for the athletes, um, we are paying you 100% of what the budget is for any, uh, any opportunity is what we refer to them as. And that means we're charging the company to have access to you, the athlete. We're not taking any money from you, the athlete. And again, we built a platform for you. Um, so that's sort of our, 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 our little pitch. Um, I'd, I'd like to open it up from there. Uh, Garen, if you want to add anything after this as well too, please do. Um, but that's our, that's our whole little pitch. Uh, cool. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Um, I think from a, from a former player's perspective, I spent plenty of time like playing, uh, playing pro down in Australia and stuff. But I think the thing that people need to realize is that back during the time when I was playing, it made me sound like very old, but, um, I didn't actually have access to these type of development tools. Um, so we essentially had, it's kind of like you look at a NASCAR A NASCAR has got all these different stickers and all these different brands on it. And obviously when it comes down to the hot, best, highest performing, uh, car wins, then there's more branding going to happen and more exposure to that brand. Now you got to take everything that Michael's developed here in, in, a, in a different, in a different context, because what you should do is actually sit down and go through exactly what you need to perform every every year do you need x amount of dollars for your travel do you accommodation all these different type of things so that when it comes to conversations um that need to be had you've got these bases covered all right so at the same time you've also got to look at um how you can actually improve your exposure within the huckle platform so remember when you first joined huckle you put your profile information down now imagine if there is a company out there that might be focusing on, you know, former a certain a certain area of the market, and you happen to be from that area, you happen to be you know, experienced in that area with your work. Well, then you're the type of person they want to talk to. All right, so go back into your profile after this meeting. Go back into your profile and see if you can add things there that actually put you into like show more of yourself. Like Michael was saying there before, it's being authentic. Like, don't just take it as a script. Take it as an opportunity for you to actually break out and, and show what you're about. Because from a uh, from a perspective of a um, from a company, companies look for that. They're looking for that, trying to get that leverage in the marketplace. Now, we're not going to be able to walk into an organisation say, "Hey, give us hundred thousand dollars as a sponsorship." They're not going to do it. They're going to find out how they can leverage us as individuals and as a group to get the most out of their out of their spend. Um, and that's exactly where we need to go with this. So everyone needs to be doing their own individual part uh, for us to really succeed as a group. So, um, but I'll, I'll hand over to, like, just open it up to everybody. Um, as I said, Michael's there to ask any questions, but I think it's really important that um, no, que no question is a stupid question, all right? This is all, this is very important. All right. Yeah. And and one thing just to note on that, Garen, um, you're first of all, I think those are all 100 percent accurate. And um, now here's the thing is that so a lot of athletes that are coming on our platform, um, I, I think, are it's incredibly diverse right now. And we've been only been open the doors and we're in beta right now. Um, we will ask you to give us a little bit of patience because we're excuse me, we're bringing brands on and some of the brands that we're in contact with are very big brands, GoPro and Sony being included in those. Um, and they're the price points that we have on there are going to be at all different price points. So will there be $5,000 opportunities? Sure. $20,000 opportunities? Maybe. Um, but right now, if you look at it, it's $250, $500, $750. And those are, I think meaningful at a time where the brands may not have large dollar amounts themselves. And so when you put those two things together, it's more money for you to be doing your sport. It's access for a brand to athletes like yourselves. And the market's going to determine, and I always say this, the market's gonna determine what fair market value is. So we're just seeing price points right now. Do we think those are going to go up? I think the answer is yes. 
but we're we're just seeing what the marketplace is happening right now so um i would encourage you to say that this is something that you can do uh you do have access to opportunities and um you can this is in parallel with the love of your sport so i think this is going to be a unique marketplace that we're building where brands also by the way the number one spend in advertising is live sports so live sports survived the pandemic um in fact it grew 40 percent during the pandemic so live sports is the thing it's the golden ticket for advertising so when you look at that from a brand perspective for them to have access to live sports via athletes like yourselves is incredibly meaningful to them so this is going to be a wave that's coming and we think we're we're leading the charge on that um but i always have been saying that excuse me my dog is going to be barking quite a bit my son's coming home she's a collie and barks like crazy so um uh but but that's it so i i just wanted to share that with you because some of the athletes that come on say you know i didn't know that i was marketable uh, I didn't know that this would be an opportunity for me. And what we're saying is, come on, be real, be show yourself. And our as our as our platform grows, we're going to be making those connective opportunities. If you're sharing the real parts of you, we're going to be brands that are going to be interested in what you're doing. So um, yeah, with that, if you guys have questions, please ask them. I'd I'd be happy to uh, spend this time with you. Um, so, kind of, this one's kind of outside the realm, realm of Huckle, but if us as uh, athletes individually like, identify a company that we think we'd be a good fit for, how would you recommend almost like cold calling that company? Like, yeah, what it's a good, it's great question. Like, kind of something like that. Yeah, it's a great question. So, um, so first of all, what happens is I talk to the majority of our athletes. You're, you're going to go to, you're going to go to, this is natural. So, I'll give you an example. We have a triathlete that is that we're sponsoring currently out of Germany. Um, very talented. He's trying to become very competitive in the world of Ironman, um, and he's a really good kid. He's just a salt of the earth kid. And he came to us and he's like, you know, I'm trying to get, you know, I want sponsorship, which we helped out with. And then he also said, I'm trying to get all of my gear because that will help me. So what happens is in that example is a triathlete goes to a bike company, goes to a shoe company, goes to a helmet company. And what happens is they're now in line with 200, 300, 600 other athletes. And the problem is what they're gonna say is, okay, show me what your track record is, give me a resume, they're gonna pick the best. Then they're gonna tell you, we'll give you discount on product, but we're not going to give you product in kind. So in that example, that works. But the problem is you're in line with hundreds of other athletes. So my suggestion would be, and that's why we hold, we say this whole thing around, what are your, what are your interests and passions? So this same athlete said, you know, there's this luggage company that I really like, and I'm, I'm traveling all the time. And that would be something that would be really helpful. Well, he, we're like, okay, that's the gold right there. So now you are an athlete, maybe the first in line of an athlete. You're working with a company that can have a very real story around athletes who travel all the time and now are using our product and now we have content. So in that example, first of all, I would encourage you, if you're, if you're going after all the ones, just be a real, realistic that in your sport, you're going to be in a long line. Um, be very realistic about that. Uh, but going back to your question, if you can go to companies where it's now outside of your sport, like the luggage company for this triathlete, you now have a good cold call. And your cold call is, A, should always be to the marketing team. If they have a sports marketing team, then yes, I would go to them. Uh, more than likely, the majority of brands that you're talking to are just going to have a marketing department. And you want to show them, A, why you're the person, right? And the cold call is, I'm an athlete, I'm passionate about, in this example, I'm traveling all the time, I need good travel equipment or luggage, and I could be a content provider for you. Now suddenly the marketing person's like, okay, we have something here. 
Um, so that would be the process that I would uh, I would encourage you to do. Be realistic if you're going after the the companies that are in within your world of sport, um, but the ones that are outside show the value of what you can bring. And I would also say that um, you do not have to have you know the, the it quickly goes to are you on social? What are your number of followers? And they try to um, you know they they try to put a rating on you as to what that marketing can be. I would argue that a lot of that is changing. The dynamic is changing now. The dynamic is around content. And so if you can show that, you know, A, you're really passionate about what the product is, but then B, um, you can say, I'm, this is unique in the content that I could bring. There's something very meaningful there. Great. Thank you. Yes. When you're talking about some of the content, do you think that it would be better for some of us to create separate pages that are specific like on our athlete side or just use like our main pages with Instagram and Twitter? Um, so that's a good question, TJ. I think, um, you know, for me, it's it's about the the whole individual, right? So if if I'm looking at it and, and here's I'll, I'll give you a, a, an example. So when I've worked at big brands, we've always talked about like, okay, it, Sony as an example, do we start another brand and another campaign around a specific product or is it always under Sony? And the answer to that is it's always under Sony or and the answer to you is it should be about you specifically, right? So now, do should you have different social channels? Sure, that's up to you. Um, you know, I think having different social channels means you're having to post on different things all the time. If that's of interest to you, sure. Um, but the essence of what your pages should be should be you, the athlete, and you, the individual, together. Um, they shouldn't be separate entities. And so while you are an athlete and while you are an individual, from a marketing perspective, I'm looking for the whole, um, not just the not just the athlete. Now, I would say if you're going to look at things that happen on analytics of what's going to perform, certainly if there are rugby fans and you post something on rugby and then you post something about you on vacation, your rugby rugby may perform better. Um, but the reality is, every all of us are individuals, and and you you show yourself as a as a you know a whole individual. So I think you. I hope that answers your question. Yep. Great. No. Yeah. I will say as, as a follow up to that, is there certain things like maybe in our descriptions of our pages or something that you would recommend? I know hashtags have been in and out and like research of the trending or whatnot, things that you could say to help get us out there to be to get more views, to get more followers as well. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, certainly, uh, if you look at a lot of the, you know, a lot of the performers or people that have a lot of following they're always doing hashtags so i'm going to give you an example my dog that just left the room she has 2700 followers on instagram um and we hashtag everything kali molly may which is her uh german shepherd kali dog love dog life all of that so yes it does it does help um, now the, the, the tip that I would give you on that is that if you look at how those things behave and how we do it, there's a way to remove it from what you're actually, you know, put it lower in the fold on the post as opposed to everything in your face when you're actually posting it. And you can certainly research this and there's ways to do it. Um, but yes, I would say it's with all things. So even with Huckle as an example, um, we're yes you can join the platform and will things come to you yes and are we going to make connections yes um the reality is with everything you also have to do the work and so to your point tj if you're saying i want to get out there i want to have more visibility i want to uh you know gain more traction then that work part is actually finding out what are the things that are working and not working and including hashtags right so 
those things are very meaningful. And same thing with our platform, which is you can go on, you can sign up and you don't have to look at anything. But if you come on and you're looking for things and you're doing the work, the likelihood that you're going to be getting things is going to be that much bigger. So it's with all things, right? So um, uh, we, we've, we've also had a big insurgence right now, which is name, image, and likeness, which is in college athletics, which you've probably all heard about. Um, college, college athletes can now be making money while playing college athletics. This is a big open door. Um, but what we're, we're hearing so much, which is going on in that marketplace. And one of those things is the athletes are like, well, I'm, I'm open for business and I'm not getting anything. And our response to that is actually you are open for business, but you have to go out and actually do the work, right? So just because you're an athlete at a school doesn't mean you're going to be getting name, image, and likeness deals. You have to be on platforms. You have to be looking at things. You have to share yourself. Like That's the part of the work that you have to do. So as you're doing your training to be an athlete, you're also doing the work to do the training to get deals above and beyond what you're doing as an athlete. And that's with all things, right? So um, yes, TJ, I think you getting those things as tools to actually generate more awareness is certainly going to help you. Yeah, that's, I mean, that, that point that you mentioned about like getting out there and doing the work as well, that's, that's very important. Like, I mean, don't just, it's like, for example, when Carolina Storm, for use that as an example, right? We get admitted to a, a new competition. Like, is it just that you guys sit there and say, okay, we're a part of Carolina Storm, we, we're going to go with it? It's like, no, well, we're going to actually select a team for that. Now, way to do that is for you to do the work to actually get in that team. All right. So it's the same with anything that you do. And when you become more exposed in this marketplace, the harder the hardest workers always win. Yep. Right. Because you don't leave anything left on the sideline. You just basically work hard, whether it's on the field, off the field. And remember that brands are looking for how you act in your social life as well as how you act on the field. Um, because you might be the best player in the world, but off the field you might be, and excuse the friends, you might be an idiot, right? And that's will turn will turn that brand off you. Doesn't matter how good you are, it'll turn that brand off you because you're giving their brand the wrong image. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So you need to put yourself in a in a position where. In your profile, you're continually adding things. If it's a photo, you add it. Like it's everything that you can add there, with which puts you in a very good light, is going to be will resonate with the right type of uh, marketing from a company. It doesn't matter what it is. Like Michael said, it's, if it's a dog, you know, you might find out there's a there's a brand there. So and they they want to get leverage. And leverage is a huge thing, right? And don't don't feel like you. Um, I mean, uh, Michael was talking about, you know, triathletes and all these like high level athletes. You got to remember like where things are going with this particular space. We're just at the, at the scratching point, you know, like it's, it, this is going to, within the next two to five years, it is going to explode. Now you look, look back in two to five years and go, I wish I had done the work. Right. So now you can actually get an opportunity to do the work. And as we start to evolve, I'm not going to say too much about what I've been working on in the background here, but I can tell you that the next two months is going to be very interesting for, for Carolina. Um, and it's going to be on the basis of, obviously, imagine if you go down you go down to um, New Orleans and you win that tournament down there. All of a sudden, people start talking about like who we are, what, what we're doing. Then add to that the different things that are, um, that are being worked on that I'm working on in the background. You're going to be go from one of fifty players to one of five thousand, ten thousand players. I can guarantee you. So you want to be able to get in and get yourself set up now, because yeah, it's like I said, I can't say too much about it, but it's exciting. Yeah. So a couple things on that, Garen. Um, so when I was at GoPro, I was the first person in charge of brand. Um, so Nick Woodman, the CEO, uh, hired me to to take care of his baby, basically. 
And we worked with, so there was a sports marketing team and sports marketing team would choose who the athletes were. So they were very good at whatever their particular sports were. And our sports marketing team was world-class. Um, but it was my job to look at the athletes from a brand perspective, right? So you can be great at skydiving as an example. Um, but if you go out on Friday night, you've got a GoPro hat on, you get banged up at the bar and you post that on social media, that is not good for our brand. And so I would look at those things and say, any of those ancillary things which could jeopardize our brand are, are showstoppers. So exactly what Garen said, which is um, all of these different nuances that you're doing in social all add up. And so you want to make sure that all of that, that aggregate, that add up is the real you and look at that from a marketability standpoint and be real with yourself. Um, I think that that's something. The other thing that Garen mentioned about, you know, uh, I mentioned triathlete um, I, on our platform. So we have arm wrestling, we have esports, we have uh, rodeo, we have the jockey association and unbeknownst to me, there is apparently a world tag championship where they're in arena and they actually play tag. That too is on our platform. So we we're and these are massive marketplaces like rodeo, massive marketplace, esports. I'd be very good at that. Huge. What did you say? I said I'd be very good at tag. I think. <laughs> yeah. So and by the way, this is ESPN prime time. So, and we also, we've got Cornhole on our platform, also ESPN primetime. So when we're talking brands, when you look at like the breadth of sports, the breadth of brands and companies that want access, um, those are, those are meaningful. I always say to my boys, find your people. And in the world of tag, those people love that. So, and there's a marketplace in there and there's brands that want that. So the same thing exists in all different sports. So um, I would encourage you to have a, uh, a, a, you know, a mindset of you can leverage your current athletic prowess into financial opportunity. I mean, another one you, that you did mention there too, Naya Tapper. She's on, yep. she's on the platform. She is. So, you know, you look at, someone that's got a really good brand in rugby and worldwide brand in rugby um she believes in the, in the platform so that's that's a big tick in itself yeah and then in terms of the platform we just launched we're in beta uh there's mo the, the brands that we're talking to right now um i can tell you even from a marketing perspective i'm speaking with marketing people and what we're doing is something very innovative. Um, and, and, I, and I say that, not me stating that statement, but all of my peers saying what we're doing is very innovative. And that is access to athletes like yourselves, um, where literally I can have any brand work with any athlete in any sport on any campus, in any city, in any country. And when you look at that from a marketing perspective, that is a marketing machine. Um, and so there's a lot more to come. So the reason I mentioned that is that if you're on the platform, if you're having any issues, you have questions, you need assistance, please reach out. Uh, there's customer support on the site, but you also have access to myself. Uh, my wife, Stephanie is also involved, the co-founder. Um, so we're, we're here to like, we want to make it a great experience for everybody involved and we're very early on. And so we're grateful for the people that are involved. And we're also trying to make it a seamless experience. We're going to, we're raising capital right now. The functionality is going to grow way beyond what we're currently doing. One of the initiatives we have is to create educational content for athletes like yourselves around what does it actually mean to build your personal brand? How do you do that? How do you do that in different sports? How do you align that with your interests? And so we're going to do a lot of educational content to help you. And we're also going to be doing educational content for brands. What does it mean to work with athletes? How do you choose the right athlete? Um, all of that's going to be on there. So there's a lot more to come, but I wanted to mention that so that, you know, 
if you're on there and you have any questions or issues or need anything, please let us know. We'd, we'd be happy to help. Yeah. Another question. Uh, what would be like a good tip you would give athletes that are trying to like separate themselves from other athletes as well as like uh, when they get like compared on the same level, but then when it comes to brand, it's a uh, different level. So what would be a good tip you would give to an up and coming athlete? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, I, it, it's interesting because when you, when you put a comparison, there are qualifiers, right? So people are going to look at one thing versus another. Um, what we're finding is, so I'll, I'll give you an example. We have a brand that's on our platform right now. It's called Nuvana. And um, they have a device called vagus nerve stimulation. And um, what that does is the vagus nerve, it seems um, they access it through the left ear. And there's a pulse that helps stimulate the vagus nerve. And with the stimulation of vagus nerve, it helps a host of health benefits. So reduction of stress, um, better sleep, better focus. There's a number of benefits from it. But the reason I'm mentioning this is that they came on, and if you think, like, a lot of the times you think linear of, as you mentioned, around how do you stand apart? Well, in this example, it was not linear at all. In fact, what they wanted was they wanted somebody in their 50s. They wanted somebody who had stress. They wanted somebody who had anxiety. They wanted somebody who had lack of sleep. So in that example, the athlete comparison thing basically goes away, right? It's a, um, it's, it, 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 who, who fits that opportunity definition that the company had. So I think one of the things that we're going to be seeing is exactly that. Um, now, on a linear basis, if you're saying, how do I stand out against all of my rugby players that are on this call, right? Um, there is the only suggestion I can give on that is that, be, like, do the work, as with all things, um, be real, um, and, and just show the parts of yourself that um, are authentic and somewhat make you more vulnerable than anybody else. Um, like there, we have athletes that have shared on the platform. Another thing that this product does is it helps with mental health. And one of the athletes said, I suffered from bipolar. Um, those are things which I think are incredibly difficult to share, right? Let alone on a, uh, an open platform, but he did. And because of that, he's probably going to be working with his brand. So those differentiators of being real is the thing that makes you stand out um, because we're all individuals. I got you. Like real personal experiences. Exactly. Exactly. And from a brand perspective, now I'm a, I'm a marketing guy. So I'm looking for the real deal, right? I, I, I can pay anybody to say anything. The reality is that's not really meaningful for me for as a marketer. And again, my my boys, they know what's real and what's not real. And so real is the thing that is marketing now. And that's the thing that we think, like if you if you look at it from that standpoint, then your numbers on your social following really don't mean anything to me. Because if I have content and I have an engine to use that content, then I can push that out. Um, and it's a real story, right? So, so all of that, it, it, it changes the entire landscape of what's happening with marketing and advertising right now. And that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to educate around. That's what we're leading. Um, and that's what we truly believe. So would you say kind of like the best success? Cause it, it's honestly kind of the opposite of what I would typically think instead of going to, companies are already in your sport and trying to convince them why you're the best in sport kind of what your interests are go to those interests and bring those interests into the sport those companies correct now kyle i'm not saying don't go to the companies that are in your sport right if you're the best in your sport hey go for it even if you're not the best in the sport go for it but realize you're in a very long queue you're in a long line 
just be realistic about that. Um, as long as you're realistic about that, then your expectations probably follow with that reality, right? Um, but the other ones are, yes, if you've got this, th this literally, we this triathlete that we worked with sends all of these things and it was as predictable as we had said. It was all the biking stuff, the helmet, the everything. And, and, and we're like, okay, try to take it one degree further. Soon as he presented this company, it was like, like that. It was, you know, yes, this is hundred percent the company you need to go after. Really innovative company. I don't think that they've done nothing currently that's in the world of sports. Suddenly a guy's knocking on their door in the world of sports, right? So that like, again, I'm the marketer, I'm sitting there and I'm saying, you know what? I think we have something here. I'm going to look at that. Um, so it's not to dissuade you to go after the ones in your things. Just realize it's going to be a long line. So you would say it'd be uh, more so about going after companies that like people would never think to uh, more of the companies that people would like less think of, but like at the same time, you would remember that company by their brand type companies or. Well, I think, you know, first of all, it's like one of the things that we talked about on our, 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 our platform is like, is it brands or companies? So brands are like iconic. They're the Nikes of the world, Under Armour. Companies may be a, I don't know, a mom and pop shop and they don't consider themselves a brand and they still want to get in the world. They do want to do marketing through sports. Uh, so we had a lot of dialogue around like, is it companies or brands? And the reality is it's both. And we think we provide access to both. So the mom and pop shop can come on our platform at a price point that they want to spend in the world of marketing. So when you ask the question, it's really around, um, it's not that companies that we wouldn't think of, it's, it's trying to take a unique approach to um, the world of sports and the world of marketing. So again, as Kyle mentioned, if you go after the rug, all of the rugby companies, um, you're going to be in the line with, you know, presumably a lot of other, a lot of other rugby players. So, with that in mind, how do you set yourself up for success? Well, you do that by saying, "I am a rugby player, and I have a a circle of influence because I am an athlete and a rugby player, and I have this interest set of whatever that is, right? That interest set." You go to that company within your interest set and you tell them, I'm I'm really passionate about whatever. I, we work with a WNBA player. She let me know she likes cooking and traveling. And she was really embarrassed to tell me that. And I said, well, why is that? And she said, everybody has known me in my life for being a good basketball player. They don't know me for the fact that I like cooking. And I was like, okay. As an example, what if we go to companies that are in the cooking space and they want access to you being an, a female athlete in the WNBA? And she's like, I think that would be great. Same thing on the company side. So for direction for you is really how do you sort of flip the script on everything that's happening and how do you make your, yourself, and you were asking before, stand out? Well, the standout is you're an athlete. And the standout is you also have these other interest sets and those interest sets are the companies you should be going after. Michael, is there, besides like content creation, you talk about mom and pop, I'm trying to work with like a local brewery company here because everyone here is rugby player, beer yep. and rugby go hand in hand. Sure. Outside of content creation, what is the way that you think that like we can help brand ourselves to you know, Garen talks about trying to raise five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars to travel to work with some local places outside of just like the Instagram or the Facebook or the TikTok space. Yeah, I think that's a great question because I don't want to I I don't want to suggest that the only way to do this is social or content, right? The reality is if you go on the Huckle platform, we have a host of ways that that you can work with people. It can be product endorsement. It can be appearance. It can be autograph. Um, it can be social. It can be content creation. You can be a spokesperson. You can uh, do a presentation for the company, whatever those things are. In fact, I'd encourage you to go look at 
all of the different things that are on the platform of how you can say, I would work with a brand or a company um, because those are all of those things. So to your point, TJ, you know, how do you work with a company? Well, the company is sitting there saying, okay, I've got beer. I know beer goes with rugby. What can we do? And you, you show the, don't you guys drink beers out of shoes? Isn't that your thing? <laughs> right. Okay. So you, you bring in a shoe brand. Um, now this is me going full marketing on you guys, but you bring in shoe brand, you do a collaboration with the beer and you've got the North Carolina rugby association. Um, and you guys are all doing some type of collaboration together. Um, so the shoe brand company gets uh, a plug, the beer company gets a plug and it's all brought to you by the world of rugby. So th there's a, there's a number, it, marketing can be as creative as you can think about it. Um, and, and I know not a lot of people, like I, I speak marketing in my sleep, but you're going to be working with companies where they have ideas of what they would like to be doing. So in that space, prompt them for what are your thoughts on what you would like to be doing? Here are some ideas that I have. Um, here are things that happen in my normal day as a rugby player that I could bring to the brewery. And then the brewery starts thinking, okay, we do want to be in rugby. Um, this is a great deal. So my suggestion would be, even if you don't speak marketing, is to just throw out ideas of what you do on a normal basis that could be thought starters for the marketing people that you're working with. Then suddenly you're creating the dialogue, you're showing initiative, and the company starts thinking, you know, we never thought the beer out of the shoe thing would be great, but we think the beer out of the shoe thing with a local shoe company could be awesome. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot there. So I think for you as athletes, again, you're doing the work, right? So you're creating the narrative. So you're going to the company, you're saying, here's what happens in my daily life. Here's what happens as a rugby player. Here could be unique opportunities for you as a company. Um, I'd like to figure out how we can figure out how to do that. Now you're showing the initiative. Excuse me, you are doing the work and you're prompting the company to become creative like you're being creative. That's going to get you a lot of opportunity. A lot. And it's just not content. Um, I mentioned content because even in that example, content is going to come out of it. They're going to want to see you drink the beer out of the shoe and put it online. Um, but, um, and by the way, my one of my boys played rugby for a while and I, I did actually see him drink out of the shoe. It was, it was, it was fascinating. Has he still got all his teeth? Yeah, <laughs> he does. In fact, the game that he drank out of the shoe um, he ripped part of his ear off and the team was so proud of him. It was like he earned his stripes. Um, yeah. So it was, it was fun to watch. Yeah. So any other questions, guys, I think if you're asking all the right questions, um, I'm, I'm super happy to be able to share this with you guys. Um, again, we'd like to, lend you any assistance of what you need. If you have more questions after this and you, you start noodling on things and you want some more answers, we'll shoot us an email. We will take care of you as well. Um, but uh, yeah, if, you've, if there's no more questions, we can hop. But if there are, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Good. Thanks for helping out, Kyle. Thanks, Garen, for getting the crew on. Thanks for everybody for joining. Guys, Michael, thanks for your time, Matt. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Right. Thanks, Gary. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.